Okay, six ago. My name is Kelly Breaker. My Blackfoot name is up based to me, or to some of you, Boynopsy. My grandparents are Robert Sr. and Rosalind Breaker. My mother's Donna Breaker. My father's Adrian Soloway. His parents are the late Adam and Rosie Soloway. My Blackfoot name came from Adam. I'm doing this voiceover as a lead into the very recent and interesting open band meetings in Calgary on October 9th at the Coast Plaza and at the SRDL building on Sixaga, October 10th, 2012. My political involvement on Sixaga started in about 2001, I think, starting with the labor code violations I found at the Sixaga Nation Police Service. I'm one of the few remaining political activists on Sixaga. I can literally count to my fingers and toes how many of us are left. And I give special mention to Roy Little Chief and Eve Yellow Old Woman for all their effort and their, and their sincerity and their... Uh, in what I call political activism. And for the record, Sixaga's radicals are not the same as Sixaga's political activists. I should know. I've argued with them a few times. As of today, I'm 39 years old, and other than my political partner who was in her early 30s, there was no one else in their early 30s, 20s, or teens who was actively, that's the key word, actively standing up to publicly challenge Sixaga's weird and broken political system to seek sincere resolution and lasting social change that does not cause more social injustice. And yes, I'm challenging the people when I say that, and you know who you are. You are very politically minded, but yet you're not standing up as we do, and it's very important that you do that. Watching from the sidelines is very entertaining, but is actually counterproductive. But because I have to speak for the silent, uh, those who are abused, the bullied, and the scared, and yes, I've been asked to do so, my name has literally been written into the history books of Sixaga. So where's your name? And yes, that is another challenge to you people out there, you who are very politically minded, to stand up so you yourself can be remembered for all your efforts, like I will be. Over the last 10 years, I've put out several political essays, rants, and manifestos about the illness that haunts Sixaga's politics and about Sixaga's political stagnation. Sixaga is two things. It is a culture of the real Blackfoot people and a business as operated by council along with the administration. But the business side has been placed over the people. And as a result, we see the consequences. Inequality, division, boredom, and the poor, the people living under poverty. As I now live in Calgary, I have noticed the glaring inequality is shocking. It is no secret Calgary members do not benefit from the funding or revenue Sixga receives, even on our behalf. Uh, don't get me wrong, the leadership do reach out to Calgary, but it is a drop in the bucket and often involves bureaucracy. But at the same time, the same thing can be said about on reserve members. So many are at or below the poverty line, yet the leadership gets funding on their behalf too, and yet poverty still exists. And once again, don't get me wrong, life is not all about money, but the leadership operates Sixaga as a business for the benefit of all. So where is the share for the people? I once heard that it costs $80 million a year to operate council and the administration. Now, if that amount is actually divided up between the Sixaga population, which is near 7,000 members, that means we are entitled to, or we are worth $11,000 a year, each of us, our head count value. So where is that value? Just how communal is Sixaga? Does Sixaga operate for the benefit of the whole membership or just a select few? As it turns out, it is only for a select few. After all the years of open band meetings, I frankly got tired of watching people beg for assistance, work, or recognition from the leadership who just sit back and stare at the people or offer insufficient answers, sometimes heartless answers. I decided to press the inequality issue at the recent open band meeting in Calgary. I openly challenged council to a public discussion and debate and for the first time in history, a chief stepped forward to debate or have an open discussion. And this was Chief Fred Rabbit Carrier. I addressed many issues in my discussion with him, but on the issues of entitlement, I said, do the Sixaga people, especially in Calgary, are we even entitled to the money that is sent to Sixaga on our behalf? If that is the case, well, where is it? Because I don't see it. Where is that money? Or do we deserve that? And Chief Fred Rabbit Carrier responded to many of my suggestions as best he can, but on the issue of entitlement, he responded as, Sixaga is under the Indian Act, whether we like it or not. That is where we are from. We are governed by the Indian Act. The Indian Act is what was put forward, and that's sorry to say this, but it's just for reserve residents. That's what all the agreements are. 
not for the people living off the reserve, but unfortunately we're broke at this point in time. After Fred finished speaking, Councillor Laverna McMaster stood up to address the questions I put forward, and on the issues of entitlement she said, yes, you don't get part of that money, boo-hoo, that is just reality. Obviously a lot can be said about Fred's candid admission and Laverna's boo-hoo comments. Uh, Fred's comments were interesting to hear it out of the mouth of a chief once and for all, but Laverna's comments were actually completely unoriginal. I've heard the boo-hoo sentiment before. Siksika suffers from extreme anti-democratic mentalities and processes, and instead of thinking outside the Indian Affairs box, which council actually is 13 representatives of Indian Affairs, so why vote? The leadership has often said, our hands are tied by the Indian Act. In other words, Siksaga's leadership want the ability to act any way they wish, to do as they will, but when it comes down to it, they cannot take responsibility for their own actions. I will give a detailed commentary on Siksaga's social and moral responsibilities at another time. But for the sake of this voiceover, the words of Fred and Laverna bleed over into the other open band meeting the following day at the SRDL building, October 10th, 2012. Once again, depending on who was talking at that meeting, the concerns of the people briefly touched upon the inequality of the nation or hit the nail right on the head. We even got to hear the words of Elroy Jerry, who is spearheading one of the fronts against the upcoming resort lease renewal referendum coming to Siksika very soon. At the end of the meeting, the last speaker was Councillor Reynolds Medicine Traveler. As one of the architects of the resort deal, he got up to defend his and council support for the resort deal. Well, he should. It was Council's collective idea to approve it, after all. The only problem is, Reynolds said he was appointed by Pistaduki, or God, in English, and thus the resort deal is good. Yes, he actually said that. After the meeting and since, I have spoken to many people, including the elders who were there, about what Reynolds actually said. Each one of them smirks and shakes their heads. Yes, that is what Reynolds said. One elder said to me about Reynolds' divine appointment, What does religion have to do with it? For those who want to hear Reynolds actually talk about his his uh, appointment by God, please ask Wade Healy. He and his team videotaped the entire meeting. Perhaps ask Wade for the audio of it. In the future, I'll put forward a paper that describes how Siksaga's original Blackfoot religion or spirituality, which is what I'll call it in English, and how Christianity are extremely beneficial to Siksaga. But I will also demonstrate the consequences of when the Blackfoot religion and Christianity are not practiced properly, how it actually hurts Siksaga and individuals. As it turns out, belief is not enough. You have to believe properly. Religion and politics do not mix. In terms of alternative information on the resort, I give special mention to Elroy and Connie Jerry and to the people on Facebook who put out the alternative opposing viewpoint on the resort. Thank you so much and you know exactly who you are. I now present to you some speeches given during the recent open ban meetings about Siksaga's inequality, lack of heart, the discrimination of officer from members from Calgary in particular, and about the resort. Because the leadership still has yet to support the idea of the people organizing themselves into alternative political parties or interests, we will continue to offer glimpses of democratic hope this way. And for the record, I did not need the permission of Indian Affairs to do this nor is the Indian Act an obstacle for me to speak out. One day, Siksika will be able to say, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, and Council Chambers. Until then, a dream of true democracy for all of Siksika. Kian.